So my friend 55500 Rocky writes, would you do an instruct on how to use Photoshop for fashion drawing step by step? I have Photoshop, but I don't know how to use it, especially with layers. I would love to learn it. Love, Marie. So Marie, I've been meaning to meet this request for you for a long time, and I've actually had this request from a couple other people as well. So I thought I'd do a really quick rundown of kind of my techniques on how I use Photoshop for doing textures and colors on my fashion illustrations. Uh, obviously, um, Photoshop is a very heavy-duty, lengthy program, and I can't teach it all to you because I don't even know it all, and um, I'm not necessarily an expert. I'm somewhat self-taught, but I have had a lot of classes on it at school and uh, that sort of thing. So I can give you a few basics on stuff that I use most often and techniques that anyone can really use. So to get started here, um, something that I do, um, which you may or may not want to incorporate into your fashion type illustrations, is I really like um, traditional looking textures. So I do a lot of um, watercolor texture paintings and um, do watercolors and throw salt on it and get different textures and gradations and um, shapes and things like this so that I can actually incorporate them with Photoshop into my illustrations because I like it to have a little bit more of a traditional look rather than a digital painting. But you may want to do it a different way. So um, feel free to um, disregard that technique if you like a little bit more of a smooth digital look. So um, here I have a, a fashion illustration that um, I'm going to use today and just show you a few quick little things that can help you in doing your illustrations. So. Um, I'm using Photoshop CS5, so some of this may be a little bit different for you depending on which one you're using, but most of these um, things I'm going to show you will be the same. So first of all, um, I have my little illustration here that I have scanned, and um, one of the first things you want to do, which I've already done to this illustration, is to clean up sort of the smudges and the um, little gray areas and clean your lines up a little bit. So the, one of the best things to use is under image here, adjustments, and it's called levels. And um, like I said, I've already done it to this drawing, but just to give you an example, um, this is going to make your lines darker and your whites wider. So you can play with these little um, sliders here and get obviously get darker things. Let's see, I'm on the wrong, wrong layer. Image adjustments, levels. And this is going to darken up your lines and make them more contrasty. So maybe I'll make them a little bit more contrasty just so you guys can see this a little bit better. And the white slider is going to make your whites wider. So as you can see, I'm sliding this white one and it's going to lighten up any um, smudgy areas that you have. But since I've done it already with this drawing, it's not quite as dramatic. But um, something that I do sometimes is I use um, these little droppers here are kind of a good tool. Um, so if you choose the white dropper, this is you're going to select an area that you want to be white. So let's say if her face was kind of grayed in and I wanted her whole face to be white, I could select that area and you'll see that that turns everything that's in that same value white. Um, same with the black dropper here. So if I say I wanted her hair to represent black, then I would pick that and that would turn this black and everything in relation to that. So um, I'm not going to do that right now, but that's something you can play around with to get to give your drawing a cleaner look. It's really useful. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do um, is I actually have this drawing, this um, fashion piece already completed, so I'm going to kind of be working backwards a little bit, but showing you guys how to use this. Um, so my drawing is my background layer that you'll see under my layers palette over here. And I'm going to actually be doing all my layers on top of this and using um, something called um, the layer properties over here. So this is something really important to use when especially if you want to preserve your line drawing. Um, so this is going to allow me to put colors and textures on top of my drawing while still having the drawing show through. Now this little trick can be especially useful if you're actually a fashion design student or a fashion designer because you can actually use your fabric textures to incorporate into your drawing and get more of an idea of sort of the, the final piece if you're going to actually make the clothes. So um, for example, um, let's say I had this fabric that I wanted to incorporate 
um, into my uh, drawing and this is what I'm actually going to be making the dress out of. So um, so this technique I'm going to use is um, basically I'm going to um, make a selection around the dress and you can be more precise about this obviously um, using the um, selection tools over there. Um, this is kind of angular so uh, it's pretty easy for me to uh, use the the angular selection tool but um, you can also use the pen tool which takes a little bit more practice but if you have something that's a little bit more intricate shape uh, it's a little bit easier and you can get the, um, a more accurate okay hold on get this box out of here so um, what am I what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show my fabric and as you can see um, I've selected the area inside that where the the dress texture is going to go. So what you're going to want to do here, go to the selection uh, menu up here, and you want to select inverse. And that's going to actually select everything that's outside here. And then you're going to hit delete and clear that out. And now you can see that my fabric texture actually now fits in to um, the outline of my dress. So um, so from here, I'm, I want my drawing to show through, um, like that this is a little bit more incorporated. Um, but you could leave it like this if you wanted something kind of more cut and pasty looking, but I really will kind of want to incorporate into the drawing a bit more. So um, what I might do first is um, do any adjustments that you want to do. If you want to make it a little bit more contrasty, change the brightness, kind of tinker around with some of these interesting um, image adjustments that you might want to make. These are really good things for you to experiment with um, in your illustrations. Again, I would have to do a much longer tutorial on how all these things work, but um, through experimentation you can kind of tweak things to make them a little bit more interesting or suit your needs. So anyway, if I have the texture here where I want it, um, then I'm going to change the layer style. So this is kind of the important part, guys. Um, this is what's going to make the biggest difference when you want to incorporate um, textures. So primarily I use what's called a multiply layer. So I'm going to change this fabric layer to multiply. And then you're going to see here that my drawing is starting is showing through a bit. So you can see the actual line textures and already you can see that it looks a bit more like it's part of the drawing. So then you might want to tinker around with how how clear that you want it to be or how much you want it to show. So another fun thing to play with over here is the opacity, the opacity scale right here. Um, you can kind of tweak this up or down to make, make it a little bit more transparent. So if you don't want it quite as heavy, you know, you might want it a little bit lighter or, uh, you know, whatever you want to use. So, um, so moving on then to... The next step, you can also do this with um, flat color. So if you want to just use flat color, you're going to do the exact same thing here. And uh, just for fun, I'll show you how you can do this with the pen tool if you want to try the pen tool. Um, so the pen tool is over here, and it looks like this. It looks like a pen. Um, for your purposes mostly, up here you're going to see all the um, settings for the pen tool. And I mostly use the one that has um, the pen and the little box. So I usually have that one selected. If you have this one selected, I'll show you what happens, is you're going to draw, see a shape, and it's already going to fill in for you. Um, you can use that um, if you want to, but a lot of times I use the, um, the other tool because I want to be able to see the actual lines that I'm making. So you'll see the difference here. If I pick this one, um, so I start to do my selections, um, you're going to see that it does not fill in. Alright, so the pen tool is a little bit like using a piece of string or like a rubber band that you're stretching. So um, I use, this is, this is going to take you some practice, but basically um, you can, it's built on anchor points. So you're going to start your first anchor point here. Then you're going to make your second anchor point. And while still holding down um, 
your mouse button and also holding the shift key, it will allow you to stretch and kind of bend this um, band here to fit exactly where you want it. Now this, like I said, is going to take you some practice and you may have to use um, the command or the control key if you're using Windows to kind of shift these bands and shorten these little um, uh, these little shifters here and you'll kind of see the difference of what that makes and kind of get used to bending these things. Um, like I said, this is a little bit tricky and definitely for a little bit more of an advanced um, Photoshop user, um, but you can add anchor points and stretch these things and kind of, it's basically a, a really accurate selection tool and a lot of artists use these for um, line work and things like that. But anyways, you can get a nice clean selection with it. It takes a little bit longer and a little bit more tweaking here. You can kind of see how I'm slowly bending this to fit exactly in these lines, but it's going to give you a nice clean selection area, which is really nice if you want that kind of a professional look. But be patient with yourself. I've taken several classes on using the pen tool, and it's still not perfected. I'm still not that fast at it, so give yourself some, some time on that. So this is going to create what's called a path. So once that path is made, you're going to go up to your tabs up here, go to path, and then you can actually um, right click or control click and make a selection from your path. So did everybody catch that? So you're going to go to paths, find your work path that you just made, control or right click, and you're going to make a selection. Uh, don't really worry about this too much, just say okay. And then what you can do is um, make a new layer and make sure you keep these layers separate in case you do want to change something. I work on a lot of layers and uh, it's really best to name them as well. So here's dress fabric. I get kind of lazy about it, but it is better to do that because then you know where you are, you know, in your in your drawing. So then I'm going to go over to my paint bucket, which is my fill, and going to go ahead and dump that in there. And you can also hit G is a shortcut key. Shortcut keys are really useful for working faster. If you hit G, you're going to get the, the um, paint bucket. And another thing I use a lot is Command D or um, Control D, which is deselect. So that's going to unselect what you have. So um, you're going to do the exact same thing here. And you're actually going to make this a multiply layer. And as you can see, when I make it a multiply layer, then again, you can see the outline or the, um, the edge around it. So as you can see, it looks, again, like more, more part of this drawing. So um, that is kind of the basics. That's really some of the most useful things that I use in my fashion illustrations. And I can kind of show you here what the actual illustration looked like. I had some fabric texture here that had these kind of angled points. Um, and then I used another color that I filled in on the bodice here by selecting that out. And then I also used the same fabric texture for the top of the dress. And then obviously I did the orange piece up here. So that's kind of the finished fashion illustration. And um, you could do that also with hair or you could really incorporate any texture or colors that you want. But um, this, this handy little trick about making the multiply layers really works well because you don't have to um, you know, painstakingly try and color in each space without getting outside the lines. And so using the selection tools and making things a multiply layer is a really great shortcut to get your fashion illustrations looking a little bit more dynamic and uh, colorful. So I hope that helps and I hope that answered some questions for you. Um, again, I'm sure there's some better demos out there on how to use Photoshop, but these are kind of the little cheats that I use. And good luck on your drawings and would love to see some more of them. So I hope this helps you, uh, Marie, and thanks for being patient with me and waiting for me to do this demo. Best of luck to everyone, and I'll see you all soon.